Today, I will be speaking about financing and procurement models for eBus implementation uh, through the experience of Santiago de Chile. My name is Sebastián Galarza. I lead the transport and energy uh, sector at Centro Mario Molino Chile, and this is Solutions Plus Learning Program Unit 1. Um, I will briefly uh, introduce uh, my organization, Centro Mario Molina Chile. We are a research development and innovation institution based in Chile. Uh, we have two areas of work, which are air quality and climate change, where we work on uh, atmospheric uh, contamination, looking at different, method, uh, different methodologies to assess the impacts of different pollutants uh, in terms of air quality. Uh, public health and other implications as well as climate change and the other area of work that we have is energy and transportation which is the area that I lead and it's an area that is focused on the decarbonization of the transport transportation sector in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, our work is focused on the region that I just mentioned Latin America and the Caribbean but developed in conjunction with global partners as shown by um, the Solutions Plus Consortium right so we we're, our work is focused uh, in the region of Latin America and the Caribbean, but we develop uh, a lot of our work with global partners that help us bring the best experiences uh, uh, of, uh, of decarbonization in the transportation from a global arena to the local arena and help us also adapt uh, to uh, the local uh, situations and local uh, problematics, right? So, so this is the work that we have been doing. And one example of that is obviously the the... Uh, the recent introduction of electric buses into the public transportation fleet of Santiago de Chile, which is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Uh, to give you a brief overview of the city, Santiago de Chile is a large metropolis. It's, a, it's one of the mega cities of Latin America uh, and the Caribbean. Uh, there's over 7 million people living in the city. As you can see from the images, the city is surrounded by the Andean mountain range and the coastal mountain range. So the city lies in the valley between these two ranges, which uh, entraps air pollution. And this has been an issue uh, that has been exacerbated over uh, recent years, particularly with uh, an exponential growth of uh, private vehicles. Um, but at the same time, Chile has taken note of this and has pushed for more stringent emission standards and better uh, technologies to reduce uh, the negative effects of, uh, of the transportation system, right? And one of, one of the key ways through which uh, it has done that uh, is through uh, the public transportation system itself. And so uh, over the course of, uh, uh, of the last few years, or over the course of the last two decades, really, uh, what we've seen is a change in the dynamics of the public transportation system in the city, moving from informal operations with a large uh, number of bus fleets that were, uh, you know, older vehicles, not controlled, not monitored, uh, informally, informal transportation basically to the system that we have today. Uh, and today we have a system that is basically made up of close to 7,000 buses. It operates in uh, overall a little bit over 385 different routes in the city. And the way that the system is structured is that it's divvied up into different business units. Each of these business units is owned and operated by a company. And these companies, these bus operators, uh, basically have a contract with the Ministry of Transportation to supply the bus fleets, to provide the operation of the bus fleet through different parameters, you know, um, uh, that have to be uh, that have to be met. Uh, there's conditions for the operation, etc., with fines included for for uh, for service non-provision, etc., and also the bus depots for these buses. And the way that these contracts work is that usually uh, they have the the bus operators have a contract for around 10 years, which are sometimes extended. And each operator, on average, is managing a fleet of around 1,000 buses. So this is the current system uh, that has been in place over the course of uh more than two decades 
And this system, uh, although beneficial at first in terms of formalizing the transportation system of the city, has also led to uh, certain problems. In particular, uh, the size um, of the fleets of the operators led to issues uh, that could be regarded as too big to fail, right? So when one operator uh, actually went bankrupt, it placed a lot of strain on the system and uh, new conditions started to be developed uh, that should be implemented in the future. And these provisions are what are reflected in the current tender that has just closed here in Santiago de Chile, uh, which is looking to renew around 2,200 buses. 991 of those will be electric. And the model uh, is as follows. We're moving from a system uh, that previously had one operator owning both their bus fleet and their bus depots to a system where we separate at asset ownership. And we have two separate contracts by the Ministry of Transportation, was one uh, for the bus operator and another for the fleet provider, right? There are intringent uh, incentives in the contracts placed for uh, electric bus providers. So if you choose to provide as a fleet provider um, an electric bus fleet, you can access a contract of up to 14 years. Similarly, if you choose to operate with a majority electric fleet, you can access a contract of seven years extendable for another seven. So you have uh, these incentives uh, underlying the contract provisions. And one very important aspect of this uh, new business model is that the depots will now be under the purview and provided by the Ministry of Transportation. So before, uh, one of the main bottlenecks um, to be able to introduce new players into the bus operator market was the fact that the bus operators owned and operated their own depots. In this, uh, in, in this new model, that will belong to the Ministry of Transportation, hence it will make it easier to replace uh, different operators if they are not um, meeting the standards of service that have been applied in the contracts um, uh, through this new tender. So this new business model reflects what has been happening uh, previous to this tender in Santiago de Chile, but in other cities across uh, the region as well. And the business model is basically one where we see a split between asset provision and operation, right? And why is this important? This is what I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with more examples on uh, the risk distribution of this new business model and why it impacts the ability of new operators to come in, but also to service uh, with new technologies such as electric buses. Uh, so what we've seen, particularly in Latin America and other uh, developing regions or emerging economies in the world, is that traditional business models rely on mu municipal operators basically in all areas, right? We have one operator, private operator usually, which um, although uh, it, it has a contract with the municipality to serve and operate uh, 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 the bus operation of the city, the bus operator is in charge of uh, dealing with finance, uh, ensuring that they have concessional lenders or commercial lenders for their capital investments. They have to deal with procurement, uh, both of any infrastructure that is needed, as well as with uh, the bus manufacturers or bus dealers themselves. And in that sense, uh, they and and also be in charge of the operation. So in that sense, what we're seeing is that you know the risk distribution really falls upon the private operator that has to deal with the risks associated with designing and building infrastructure, procuring vehicles, financing the fleet, uh, the end of life provisions of the vehicle, the operation of the vehicle, and also the maintenance of the vehicle. So we have you know all this strain placed onto one operator, and 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 what happens in most countries. Uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean is that sometimes these operators do not have uh, the capacity to deal with this assumed risk, right? So in this scenario, uh, you know, where, where we have operators that, that are not equipped to carry all this risk, in particularly, in particular, the financial technology and, and fleet provision or service requirements can place excessive burden onto the operators to be able to meet their uh, uh, meet their um, their commitments in terms of providing the fleet, but also operating the service. So what we've seen is one of the ways in which we can uh, better distribute risk between 
uh, uh, the operator that may not be able to handle all of that, that responsibility is by separating asset ownership or unbundling ownership from operation where we basically have the owner operator uh, that traditionally was in charge of all these different aspects just being in charge of the operation of the fleets while we have a third party asset owner that is in charge of designing and building the infrastructure providing fleet specifications and procuring the fleet, financing the fleet, uh, maintaining the fleet, and providing end-of-life provisions for the fleet. And in the case of electric buses, also their batteries, right? So what happens when, when, when this, uh, this new business model is applied? What we see is that we have shared responsibilities between different players, and particularly the asset owner is able to absorb a lot of the risks associated with uh, the asset, asset provision, right? So uh, all that is transferred onto the onto the asset owner. The private operator is in charge only of operations of the bus fleet, uh, and in that sense, can 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 concentrate on providing that service while the asset owner is in charge of all the other provisions that we previously mentioned. And this is the model that has been, in essence, uh, formalized for the new uh, pro, uh, tenders to renew fleets in Santiago de Chile, but it is also the model that was applied previous to these tenders and that allowed for the introduction of almost 800 electric buses into Santiago de Chile. Sorry. Um, what we've seen here is an example of some of the business models that have been applied to the city where we have an OEM, BYD in this case, and Alex, a utility provider, and Metbus, a local operator, coming together to develop a, uh, a business model that was be that was able to quickly scale uh, into uh, operations of 100 buses or more, 100 electric buses or more. And Metbus here, uh, which uh, is in charge of uh, operating the buses, right? In turn, the buses and the chargers are bought by the manufacturer and the manufacturer has another contract with the operator where it provides services and maintenance, maintenance services for the buses and where there are monthly payments uh, for this provision of service. So it's another way of seeing the vis visualization that I presented before, which basically shows how uh, splitting asset ownership has allowed for the introduction and in mass of electric buses into the public transportation system in Chile. And we have, and what we have seen happen is over the course of uh, of no less than five years, we went from having a fleet of two electric buses to a fleet of almost 800 buses, which by the end of 2022, it will be of around 1,670 buses, which is around 25% of the fleet of Santiago de Chile. This is a huge step forward in terms of the electrification of, uh, of the bus fleet in the city that has as a goal to meet, uh, full, uh, to have a fully electrified fleet by 2035. Um, this has created a lot of uh, dynamism for the market of electric buses in Santiago de Chile. And what we have seen here, you know, is a number of different manufacturers uh, come into the market to supply buses. Most of these have been Chinese, although different uh, European firms have been able to uh, showcase their buses here also in Santiago de Chile. Actually, today, Volvo is showcasing their first electric bus uh, for the city, uh, but previous to that, we had Alstom also showcase one of their buses. However, all the buses in operation or that have been bought through the new tender are Chinese, and these are the main uh, um, main uh, configurations that we're seeing for the city, right? One thing to highlight as well during this work is, uh, you know, the, the, the con consumption and range here is based on a Santiago specific driving cycle. So even though in some cases you may see these same buses uh, showing different levels of consumption or different ranges per charge, these are the ranges that we're seeing uh, from a drive cycle that is representative of uh, the public transportation system of Santiago. So with that, I close my intervention.